All right, you're wondering what I'm doing here, right? Sitting this way, uh, casually. Well, I'm here to do what I love doing, sharing some thoughts, opinion, my, as we'll describe it, gut feeling. Recently, I was processing certain thoughts about life, purpose, and all that. And this thought came to me, what I say, attended to me. Cycle, the cycle of the earth. Does the earth go through a cycle like a pattern? We know that from science, basic science, we've been made to understand the earth moves, it rotates. Does this rotation bring about evolution? Does it lead to things evolving, people, places? And does this evolution come with certain time frame, like five years? 10 years, six years, 80 years, that once in every 80 years or once in every five years or once in every 10 years, you see a change on the surface of the earth, you know, things, people and all that. And I was just processing it. In course of processing it, I was taken back to a book I, I read, you know, in my teen years as in when I was in secondary school, a book titled, The Man Who Tapped the Secrets of the Universe. Yes, by Glenn Clark. The man here is talking about Sir Walter Russell. And I'm going to read just one chapter, more like the opening chapter, to buttress this point. Uh, we go seeking, that's what that chapter is titled, All my life I have been looking for a man who has di discovered the universal law which lies at the back of the Sermon on the Mount. Yes. And who's con I mean, who consciously uses that law with full awareness of its meaning and full obedience to its principles. Tens of thousands preach it or write about it, yet how cosmically aware of the light of God, that he would be the spiritual cause of all effect. I like the way Glenn writes, such a one would be a super genius, for the hidden secrets of the universe would be his. He would see the universe as a whole and know his relationship to it and to God. All knowledge, of course, would be his and power to use it. One day, Dr. Alexi, Alexi Carrell now, sent word he wanted to see me. The world is facing an awful crisis. You know, that's the part I'm coming to now. He said, the very future of humanity is at stake. Mankind can be saved by only a group of men who are centered in God. At the source, as in God is their center now, at the source of that, their wisdom is a part of the all wisdom and therefore so conscious of the cosmos and so integrated at the center that they will be able to think clearly in many fields and not be limited to one field alone. Such a group of men, if they could find each other and share their wisdom, might be able to, you know, chart a course that would save the world. Can you help me find them? Yep. In the field of religion, I had found several such men. Rufus Jones, I would place at the head of the list, followed by such men as Frank Labak, E. Stanley, E. Stanley Jones, and perhaps a score of others. The fact that all these men are so humble that they would shrink from making such claims for themselves is added proof that they deserve 
this honor that I would, you know, here bestow upon them. However, Dr. Carroll was urging me to find a man outside the field of applied religion, but one who had achieved such in several fields, such as business or engineering or the arts. If that is what you want, I replied, I would name Dr. George Washington Carver. First of all, he accepted this suggestion with enthusiasm. I named others, but he brought me back to Dr. Carver. Help me to contact that man, he said. Something inside me tells me that he rings true. It was with great joy that I was able to bring Dr. Carroll and Dr. Carver together. Weeks ran into weeks and years into years. And Dr. Carroll continued his search for cosmos, or I beg your pardon, cosmic conscious men. Finally, the Second World War started. Then Dr. Carver died. And at last, one day word came from France that Dr. Carroll was dead, that his dream had not died. I am still looking for men who are so conscious of the spiritual source of all creation that their wisdom is a part of the all wisdom. Find that man. An inner voice kept saying to me, and you will find an inspiration for all others who wish to prepare themselves for more creative living in an age like this. And then by the goodness of God, I was led to that man. I had started college or training school, the purpose of which was first, to get people centered in God, second, to open avenues by which their wisdom would be seen to be part of the all wisdom, and third, trace their relationships underlying all sciences and arts and philosophy so that the students will think clearly in many fields and not be limited to one alone. As I traveled, about the country. One day, a person said to me, there is a man who's, I mean, who illustrates in his own life all that you have been teaching. Walter Russell, haven't you heard of him? No, I'd not even heard of him. Months later, another person said, everything you say about the need of integrating one's knowledge and knowing the source from which it comes is beautifully illustrated by one man I know, Walter Russell. Have you ever met him? I heard of him, I replied, but I've never met him. I shall bring him to you. I shall see that he attends your talk tonight. So, reading this again as in processing my thoughts about the cycle of the earth, how the earth goes through a cycle, you know, more or less like refreshes itself, more or less like renews itself. I saw this in a better light. You know, this movement, this pattern, these changes brings about the birth of men. Men in this sense now, I mean mankind, man and women, uh, who understand why they are here and apply themselves consciously to the purpose of being here in the recent should i say five years or ten years the earth has been experiencing a lot of changes like i said that's my opinion you see a lot of changes you know the pandemic and all that the we come to see talk about the uh gig economy uh computer age and what a lot more like we need people who can conceptualize, capture these changes and communicate it effectively to bring about a positive change. Do we have such men? That was what uh, Glenn Clark in his book, The Man Who Tapped from the Secrets of the Universe, was trying to communicate. This book was written, I think, in 1945 or so, uh, immediately after the Second World War, I think. So. Let us put it now, 45 till now, to the mats. We're seeing another change, great change. But now we need men, women, who understand change and can communicate change effectively. We need to bring them.
We need to get in touch with them. That was what came to me, but how do we get to them? How do we get to them? Bring them together in one room to communicate this change, the cycle of the earth. Because very soon, there will, in my opinion, like I said, there will be another cycle. We'll start another cycle. And the cycle will begin on the pre-existing cycle, what we have done. I always describe it that we are living in interesting times, you know, very interesting because we are upon this age where so many things have been provided for us, done for us, put together for us. But you know what? We are still somewhat confused on how to like put all of this together and create our own story, create our own path. Now, the concept of disciplines, that's in school, I mean, now you go to school, I studied engineering, studied math, studied physics, studied this, studied that. You come to see that it all boils down to just one thing, bringing about the best of humanity on earth. You know, taking us back to that very, what I say, uh, reason of our being here, dominating the earth. Dominating the earth in the sense of having dominion. Can I find those people? Can I see them? That we talk on the basis of creating a beautiful future, not just for ourselves now, for the unborn, not running away from the cycle of the earth. The earth goes through a cycle. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Like it moves, literally it moves. What do you mean by that? Yes, just like you heard me. It moves. And this movement brings about so many changes. You see a lot of relationships. The sun, the moon, and all that. But one thing drives this change, and that is us, human beings, mankind. But now the question is, are we ready to reach out to one another and speak a language that we all understand that will pull us towards a brighter future. That's one question that has been going through my mind. And that is what has driven me to start this, the cycle of the earth. sounds like <laughs> a science fiction movie, isn't it? A title for a science fiction movie. But that's the truth, the cycle of the earth. We go through a cycle. We go through a cycle. Like you know that when things go through cycles, they create patterns. And when you follow the patterns, you come to understand, okay, you, 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 you understand the future by going back to the past. This was what it used to be, or this was what our fathers our ancestors left for us we'll call them clues more or less like breadcrumbs you follow the breadcrumbs and all so i think that's where we are now 2020 introduced what i call it the new cycle you know the pandemic created a lot of things we call it disruption yes but you come to see that now a lot of things have changed the way we think, the way we perceive, the way we appreciate. So now, on this premise, a new pattern has started. How do we go about it? How do we embrace it? How do we pursue it? There are men out there, yes, who are burning with such passion too and they are looking for themselves. I hope there's 
you know, they will see this. And I hope that we all will see this and embrace it in a good way to forge a new path. Beautiful. All right. This is just my musings, you know. I just wanted to share this with you. And uh, my last thought on this, I'm from Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian. And the cycle of the earth turning in our political sphere, this is like our political climate fell into this new cycle of the earth. Things are happening everywhere across the globe. You know, people are asking, requesting, demanding. So in our own country also, we're seeing that now. Yeah, we're seeing that the young people are asking. They are asking, they are demanding, they are requesting because there's a change, there's a cycle. So the question now is, are we ready? Are we ready? I mean, those people who understand and can communicate change to capture this and put it in such a frame that will create positive development. I hope they catch this. We don't have to because cycles does not bring about destruction. No, they bring about change. But now, your ability to interpret that change is either, would, or rather would either lead to a destructive path or a positive path of building. Just like we saw from what I read, the, some of the excerpts I read, these guys were really, they saw it coming. The recession and all that before the First World War, they saw this coming like, there's something happening, you know, and we need to look for people that will, would I say, depressurize the pressure that is coming. Find a way of depressurizing the pressure that is coming and communicate. You know, change brings a, a kind of pressure, you know, on, on us. So can we get such men that can receive this pressure, de should I say pressurize the pressure and bring out the best? Yes, the first world war happened, the second world war happened, but somehow these men found themselves and they did what was needed and they brought about that positive change. These men are still around. Well, I'm going to stop here because there's more coming. Yes. <laughs> There's, I, I love it when it comes like this, you know. It, it, it falls like rain on me. And what do I have to do? I try to put it together because I've come to understand that when a thought hits you, you think it has just hit you. No, it has hit so many people. And somehow we see it from different dimensions, but the message is always the same. And what is the message? Oh, positive future a better life, it is possible. I guess I have to stop here now before I start shooting like they say, shots fired, shots fired, shots fired. But I think good shots have been fired. All right, till I come your way again, what's the name? Amakri Sobri. Bye for now.